I want to talk about uh, the story I heard about that. At one point, you were really getting into maybe being a hairdresser, but you really like cutting hair. And that was going to be a thing. <laughs> you heard that story. Yeah, is that a real <laughs> thing? So when I was younger, I thought to myself, well, if I, if I don't end up making it as an actress or even getting a job ever, I'd, I'd quite like to be a hairdresser. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so I, I started by cutting my own hair, obviously, and I think as one does. And we, I was going to a wedding, and my mother had booked us these appointments at a salon, which was, was a big deal in my house. Like, we did not go to hair salons ever. But I thought I would just help her out. I think in my brain I was thinking I'd save her the money or something. So I went underneath the kitchen table and gave myself a haircut. <laughs> but then, alarmingly, after that story, a family friend who was a fully grown man, ladies and gentlemen, allowed me to cut his hair, and I cut off a piece of his ear. <laughs> this is where, I've this never is told this story on television ever in my life. Yeah, but I've you never cut told off story. a piece of his ear, man, a human's yes, ear? Yes, I actually saw it fall. Oh, my God, no, no, no. <laughs> So you didn't just slice it, you cut it off. It was, it, it was a little nick. It wasn't like a chunk. <laughs> that sounds... But if you saw something fall, that's a big problem. It was really yeah, I mean, upsetting, and I was Have you ever talked to him since? Yes, many times. Well, and did you says, look at it? Well, yes, I'm like, where's, where's the missing bit, Mick? And he's like, it's my claim to fame. <laughs> it's my claim to fame. He's proud of his little bit of missing ear. I know, bless Can you him. tell that it's missing or no? No, luckily, it kind of grew. Well, I mean, I bit. can tell. Yeah, it's, can tell. it's yeah. our own. It's our, it's our special, own little thing. Special secret. But that's yeah. where you go. I'm out. I'm now. I'm going to stick to acting. Yeah, I think I'll just yeah try my I think the acting, acting thing is going pretty well for you. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, yeah, you're <laughs> Thank you. uh, now this movie, uh, the the mountain between us, is a survival movie. Basically, I, I don't know why. I, I always think about. It. I see these movies and I go. Whew, this is acting. I mean, this is... I, I, if I was a good actor, I would do movies where I'm like on the beach relaxing. Well, Idris... For an hour and a half. Yeah, so Idris Elba, <laughs> who is in the movie oh, with great. me, the two of us. Um, yeah, I, I was very happy about the cold. I actually like cold weather and I love the snow. But there was no CGI or... No, right, yes, really? yeah, see, Idris, not so much. He would have rather had the beach um, oh. and didn't like the cold that much at all. But no, there was no CGI. So this film is but very much what you see is what we did. And, and it was amazing. We flew up to... 10,000 feet altitude every day and, 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 and shooting at minus 38 actually was our coldest temperatures. But how, do, um, how does the camera even function at that? Like how? Well, actually, we had a, I mean, we had a special lens that was made for the film so that they could shoot Idris and I in extreme close-up when we're 200 feet away because obviously you can't have film crew's footsteps all over the pristine snow. Um, oh, and that camera, that lens actually did have to stay permanently on and, and they would like literally do night watch because if it, they turned it off, it would just freeze. So, yeah, so, so, so there were some crazy things like that, but it was an incredible that, experience. I, I don't know, but again, like, you watch this thing, I go, this is, uh, this is Kate Winslet. This is, we, <laughs> this is our girl. We can, we can, I can't <laughs> let her wander around the woods with, with Idris. I mean, I want, I want to save you. And I go, <laughs> no, I mean, I don't even know how you're saying lines. Well, it, uh, you know, it, when, I don't know if anyone's been, I'm sure a lot of you have, you know, even when you're snowboarding or skiing and you go that high up and it is incredibly, incredibly cold, but this was, it was so freezing. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was hard, it's hard to move your face. You don't want to ever take your gloves. I have no photos really from the shoot because to take, just take your hand out of your glove for two seconds and first of all, your phone just breaks anyway, so there's no point using an iPhone, but your hand is, it's freezing and it takes you, you know, it's a good 10 minutes to get just the feeling back in your fingers. So what, what, it's pretty what, extreme. What if there was, what if there was an avalanche or something? I mean, that's what I think. Now, I would think that to myself. I would get there and I'd say, well, we've got the safety guys. And, but my husband would say to me, don't listen to any of them. You look for the avalanche areas. And I would. I'd get out the helicopter and I'd go, this is fantastic. That one's going to go. And um, actually, maybe that one's going to go as well. OK, where am I going to run? And it would always be behind the porta potty. That was my... That was, because there was really only one structure up there and it was the porta potty. I was like, if that one goes... I'm the porta potty's mine. <laughs> that was my whole theory. No, but uh, uh -huh. so on and on and on. Uh, I said, and it's so on and on and on.